Well, if you're just joining us, welcome back, perfect peeps. Uh, I don't have a uh, countdown for Code with Coding Cat. It's one of the things on the list. So we are just jumping directly right into it. Uh, we're just chatting about uh, Thomas is not feeling well. So hopefully his his voice holds out for us. Um, but he's telling us that he went to Prague for his offsite, which is super exciting. Um, I was in Prague probably seven years ago pre-pandemic so i'm glad to hear like things are good in prague yeah i mean it was pretty good lots of snow lots of people uh, quite touristy uh lots of delicious food too it was awesome lots I of snow I'm and yeah. positive I'm out. <laughs> i mean it was super exciting for me because i've already like i never saw it snowing only when i was a really little kid and i don't remember it so that doesn't oh my count. gosh so it was oh, like I bet that was fantastic. miracle. It's very novel at first, like when you get to see it as an outsider and you don't have to live in it and like plow your driveway and get your yeah, car. That, that's what I was saying, like, oh, as a tourist, this is great. But I bet like yeah. day to day, it must suck, especially because it's so hard to walk. I almost fell a couple of times. My girlfriend did fall on the first day. Oh, no. The yeah. city that I live in has this really cool thing called a snowmelt system downtown. So it's the largest mun municipality owned snowmelt in the country. And so all of our sidewalks are heated by oh. uh, underground hot water. That's and they awesome. have a cool little like fireplace thing, right? That you can like yeah. collect around. This there was is, a whole article in Holland, about Michigan. It's, it's Holland really cool. being like the quintessential Christmas town because you can come here and shop and like it's like being in a holiday movie. Oh, that's awesome. So that's on that's on 8th Street, right? Does that go the whole yeah. like length of downtown? It does now. It goes all of 8th Street. Um uh -huh. I don't know if they've expanded it off to the side streets, but for sure, 8th Street, like the main downtown shopping area. I never go downtown, though. It's too boutique-y for me, except to eat. Yeah. I go down there to eat. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been in a while, but usually like New Holland Brewing or Kara or something yeah. like that. There used to be a... Never been to You've never been to the Kara? Oh, my gosh. No. I guess I know where we're doing lunch next time. Their cheese sticks are out of this world. I should go oh, like cheese, cheese loafs. It's Irish food. I've oh. just... So good. Um, there, there was this cool little, um, I call it a speakeasy, even though it's probably not a speakeasy, but a lounge that's further down towards where they do the farmer's market. It's pretty incredible. What's a, a speakeasy? Lounge do you know where the- Oh, I know what you're talking about. The bar that opened. Um, it's like right by Hopcat. Yeah. And Spears, yeah, by the movie like theater. right in yep. that area. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, a speakeasy. Yeah. Uh, so I think this was during Prohibition era, era oh. um, that it happened, at least in the wow. U.S. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if other uh, countries have speakeasies. Um, so like back then, if you were drinking illegally, essentially, you would have to go into like a door and like you'd have to give a code or like I you'd see. have to know the secret to get in. Right. Like and, a secret place to go drink. <laughs> And most of the time, these places are like kind of hidden gems, if you will. So like you go into a basement that you think is a basement. And all of a sudden, it's like this beautiful lounge oh. where like you can sit in in chairs that are awesome. And uh, But they do fancy cocktails there, right? They yeah. do like the smoking cocktail. And exactly. That looks like a thing out of a James Bond movie. I like it. <laughs> I've Secret been there room. one time. <laughs> So I, I went to a speakeasy once. Um, it's it's it actually burned down, unfortunately, but it was hidden in this Mexican like restaurant. And oh. the way you entered, like it's very like, oh, this isn't fancy at all. There's nothing going on. You go into this hallway and there was a machine that you could buy like chips from. And if you pick the Pringles one, oh. all of a sudden you'd push the button. And the door would go, and that open, is very magical. And it was amazing. Like, it imagine was someone a, legit trying just to get some brios, like, oh, I'm not that's ready for this. Like, What's wow. going on? I'm not entering there. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, the, I love those little places, even if it's not to drink, if, if it's just like a hidden like place to go, like, get food or hang out. I just, I love them. <laughs> So Thomas, you've been you've been building this thing. It's called yeah. 
It was called something else before, right? What were you calling it? Like Rattlefield or something? Yeah, no. Melchiwai isn't. It is, and it isn't the su successor of Red Expel, but yeah, there was Red Expel before. It's kind of funny because we just talked to Pedro Duarte this morning, oh, and wow, really? the podcast isn't out, but we just oh. did that this morning. So we were talking about, and he, he said Radix. Radix oh. is how he pronounced it. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. it's kind of one of those gift gif things, you know? Yeah. Radix. I, Radix. One of the creators okay. was Irish. Is that what he said? Oh, uh, yeah, I think the Irish, yeah. Irish, and that was how they pronounced it. And so it kind of stuck with them, I guess. I don't know. But I, I thought that was cool because you did Radix, Radix, Felt after that. And then that yeah. was kind of the predecessor to what is now Melt, right? Exactly, exactly. That's so fun. I would love to, to talk to him someday. That must have been amazing. Did you... Um... When I was when I was at AppRite, you guys were still working on, uh, or I think they had released uh, Pink Design System or Pink. Yeah, Go, yeah, right? we still have. Yeah, we still have that. Did you help out build that, or I I don't remember. Yes, kind of. It was mostly the website uh, who mostly maintains Pink Design uh, since it's it's a CSS framework rather than a component library or anything like that. It's a large sector, uh, our CSS architect. Uh, me and the other front-end developers do uh, some modifications here and there, but it's mostly all him. Nice. Yeah. So I'm, I am looking to like making um, framework adapters for the components because right now it's just CSS and then markup, right? Sure. Uh, but I'm trying to make it so that we actually have the components themselves so we don't have to copy paste between projects. But right now it's all there is. And so like with all of that experience that you've had, like, what what makes Melt kind of different? And I'm going to show the website while we're chatting. Yeah, I think they're they're actually the opposite uh, of, uh, uh, on the component library spectrum. Pink Design is like styles, uh, and that's it. Let's say uh, styles that you apply to your markup. It doesn't provide you any markup, any JavaScript. Oh, um, that's the complete opposite. It doesn't co provide you any styles or markup. It provides you only with the functionality. Uh, so they really are opposites in that that's, sense. That's really interesting to me. So I'm I'm eager to like break this out. Do you have kind of an idea of something to build? I mean, yeah. We normally what what I do to showcase it. Sometimes I just build a builder from scratch. Uh, just that's, uh, that's for pretty meta I would love to build see a build a builder from scratch. I could do that. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds we... very like inception y, like high, high level of like a builder, but that's what they call their like components. And yeah. it's quintessentially like the headless library. Like you don't need to, it's not the styles. You would add on something like Shadsian or just something on top to do the styles. But, mm -hmm. and Shadsian Spell is actually using Melt. Exactly. For actually, Shadsian Spell actually uses bits which uses melt <laughs> it's basically oh, okay. so hunter help uh, hunter or hunter bite uh helps out a ton with melt uh ui and then what he did melt doesn't ship out svelte components it ship out just these little functions that in turn return some stars that you can sprinkle around your elements and stuff like that we call them builders because you're you normally uh, are going to create com build components out of them and so that's what uh, Hunter did. He created a library that has all the components built it out with Melt. The wow. reason he did that is because for most people, it's uh, much more ergonomic or uh, it's what they're used to, right? Using components directly. Uh, it can be a little less flexible on some uh, on some end, but most of the time, uh, you're not going to need any more than that. So yeah. Is that what Built is? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I had never... I, I saw that and I was thinking of bit.dev, which is a way to pull in oh. components. And I thought he was using bit.dev, but oh, no. bit is a library Hunter created. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, so I have been like, I will clone <laughs> your guys repository and I will just look through the source code, like looking for ideas for my components and like how you're doing things. And Melt is like way beyond like anything I can understand because of these builders mm -hmm. that I'm hoping we get to see soon. We're gonna, we're yeah. gonna understand it right now as we- But for Shad CN, it's like, um, he pulls in the library bits and I'm like, 
that doesn't show me the root component. I can't see it. So now I have to go find it. Yeah, exactly. You could, but the fun thing about Shetian approach, uh, the Shetian approach is that you can, if you want, you use bits, but if you like, no, I want more control than what bits gives me, you can just say, okay, let me copy the mail to Y example just for this. I'm not installing Shetian's felt, I'm copying it with a CLI. Yeah. So I can, I own the component. So if you want to, there are people that do that, that use Shetian and then switch it off with melt or anything like that. It would be All cool right. to have the option maybe to have a CLI <laughs> like with bits, with melt. I'm going to pitch that idea. I'm going to make this full screen so I can uh, we need to talk watch to... the builder in action. Yeah. Let's uh, do this. Are you guys ready? Uh, yeah. All right. Talk How me through we... it. How should we do it? Uh, so wait, basically, what... basically the way that Code with Code and Cat works, so you're going to tell me how uh -huh. like a person would use this, and I'm going to start typing and make something. Wait, so do you want me to show you how to use Melt or how to create a builder from scratch? Oh my gosh. Do a builder first. And do then we'll do first. it. Sounds awesome. like we want to do a builder. Okay, so doing a builder, normally with Melt, we already have all these helpers and stuff like that. So it can be a bit daunting, but you don't need anything, uh, any of that. Uh, in the end, builders are composed of attributes, like HTML attributes that's best in the component. And um, Svelte actions to actually put in event listeners and have some control of the node. So Sweet. first off, we need a Svelte project. So I would okay. just do npm create Svelte at latest. So we get the latest version. Uh, yeah. I'm like, can I spell? <laughs> is it gonna mess? Is it Does gonna it mess? ask you about five or is it just automatically five? Uh, it asks you. As you it asks through. you. Uh, I don't know. Melt again. I mean, sure. you could okay. Do a skeleton project. I always do that. I think. Uh, uh, TypeScript, please. Please. Yeah, Not a JS uh, doc fan. I'm gathering. Svelte five. It depends. We can do Svelte five. We can do Svelte four. It's up to you. In the end, let's do Svelte five. We can show how uh, okay. how it would look like with rooms. But I would do it how we do it in. Uh, because Svelte 5 is progressive, so you can do it one way on one side and one way in another. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. Ooh. Why are you using NPM, Alex? You should use PNPM. You said NPM. <laughs> I mean, well, I said NPM for the create. I never said you for you to install stuff. Oh, okay. NPM <laughs> install there. Yes. I, I was in the same boat. I'm like, ugh. See? And this PNPM will just works. magically work because yeah. PNPM is the best. I'm going to exactly. do this too so we can actually check the, the file system as we go here. Why don't you do code period dash R and it'll open in the same window? What? What? <laughs> I didn't know I didn't that. know that either. That, yeah, uh, code period dash R will open it in the same window. So to I be do fair, right I now. never use VS Code's terminal. I use like I. It right. won't do anything because you're already in that. Right. But whatever folder you're in, it will open. That's, That's cool. Awesome. Uh, okay, so yes. let's open up that dev server. Should I should I run this guy? Yeah. You know you don't have to type run with pnpm. What does that mean? Oh really? PMPM dev will work. You don't need PMPM run dev like NPM does. So you don't need better. like any of these? You don't have to put run? Nope. <laughs> wow. You know what is better even? You should use I'm just going to teach you all the tricks the Things I learn. You should use Antifu's, uh, Anthony Foo's uh, knee uh, package. Have you heard of it? Mm -hmm. What is it? Google it. Go to uh, Antifu. Like Antifu like that? Yeah. I mean, it's. I'm going to put it in the chat. So, and foo slash knee. I don't think I've heard of this. Oh, yeah, never heard of that. It's really useful. Basically, oh, what and foo is. is the the person that works on V and um, exactly. Yeah. So basically, it's an analyze. It automatically sees what package lock you're oh. using and just runs that. And if no package lock is detected or anything like that, it's just going to ask, "Hey, which one do you want to use?" Oh, that's cool. Super useful. Also, you don't have to think about what package manager you use. brew install? Uh, Anyways. It's, it's a global NPM install. I feel like that's for another day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let's do, since Melt uh, isn't not a Svelte component, we can declare, we can create a builder file. First, 
Okay. Let's think. Do you, let's go with a really simple builder. A really simple builder could be maybe a toggle. So on source and lib, we can create our own builders folder. Ooh, builders. Awesome. And there we can create maybe toggle.ts. Uh, uppercase? Uh, no, lowercase. OK. Double awesome. Check. Now, since it's a builder, normally what I uh, call them, I always prefix the move create. So I would do export function, create toggle. Awesome. No arguments. We don't need those for now. We're going to do the simplest thing. Oops. Awesome. Now, all builders can have internal state. Um, the way we can do it is, well, the toggle just needs, we just need to know if it's pressed or not, right? So what we're going to do here is just create a, a variable called pressed. And it can be a store for now. We can do a rooms version later. So it's going to be a writable. And it's going to start with false. We can handle props and parameters later. Cool. Now we need the toggle. There's a toggle element, right? We can call it trigger uh, inside. Is so this, trigger. Is this yeah. just a? Yeah, app? exactly. Okay. And then it's going to be a derived because, uh, yeah, exactly. And then we're going to get pressed. And that is our callback. I always do dollar pressed. Exactly. I and what? Does Mel have a Twitter? No, I am the Mel Twitter. <laughs> okay. I, I, try, um, I tried finding it earlier. I had no yeah. idea. I'm uh, posting I don't know if I word. should uh, create a Mel Twitter. Maybe I should. Well, what That's we're a going cool to do. logo. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we actually had a, a designer contribute to it. So it's a, it's a match between uh, the logo that the designer came up with and some tweaks I did. But yeah. Nice. Um, okay. Now it can just return like a data attribute. So we return an object. Okay. And we're going to do uh, data pressed. It needs to be in quotes since it's going uh, to be data dash pressed. Uh, like data dash pressed? Like that? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, and then okay. we're going to do, you can just pass in pressed or what we can even do. It needs to be dollar pressed. Sorry. So this is going to be an HTML attribute. Exactly. Why am I using this data attribute? So we can later style stuff. That's <laughs> basically it. But these are just the attributes. Can we rename uh, trigger to trigger attributes? Sure. Thank you. So you uh, can't use um, active is what I'm thinking, but that's the tailwind class. Like you can't use the actual active state of something like a CSS. You can't, yeah, no, I mean, I'm confused. Since we're uh, since we're not using all of that, I'm gonna do this for a minute. With Tailwind, what we do it's like we could use the data attribute selector that Tailwind has. So data dash, then I think it's square brackets pressed. Yeah. Two points, and so then you would have to you would have to get the data attribute, but you can't read the state of the element like a CSS state. You could read. Oh yeah, no problem. I mean, no, exactly. Since it's just a JavaScript state, the only way we expose it is with the HTML attribute. Yeah. We, okay. can, we do have access to hover, focus, active, stuff like that, but that's it. And then what we'd have to do is just a sync. We, we need to do an action. So what we're going to do is const trigger action or function. Sorry. Is that just with outside? Yeah. Here. Right? Exactly. That's what I was thinking is like, instead of data pressed, like you could, if, if it is active state. Oh, sorry. Uh, if it is active state. Yeah, exactly. We could kind of do what, what I normally do in mount instead of just passing press like that, I like to omit the data attribute whenever it's not present. So instead what we could do on line seven is, uh, we could add a question mark on the end to do a turnier operator if it's present. We can do an empty string because that already. Uh, made, sorry, made. if pressed is present. Yeah, then an empty string. Yeah. Otherwise, undefined. Mm -hmm. That will make it so that data pressed is only present when pressed is true. Which yeah, is it's not one. showing in the markup. Yeah. This is I like I don't even know what I'm writing right now. So this is pretty <laughs> exciting for me. Uh, I mean, I'm it's like, we're almost done. So this yeah. is cool. So we're triggering uh, we, action. Yeah. An action is just a function that accepts 
uh, HTML element as the first uh, parameter. So we can do node. Oh. Yeah, we can do L. You can call it whatever you want. Yeah, and it's an HTML element. We can even restrict it if we want to, like a button or something like that. But at Melt, we don't do this okay. normally. Now we just need to add a event listener. So what we're going to do is function handle click. If you're not restricting it to certain elements and you're type checking it, how are you handling accessibility for that? So basically, that uh, what we do is we already put in some rows. Like for example, we expect this to work as a button, so we put row uh, button the attribute uh, the HTML row to be a okay. Button. So you're doing case. you're adding roles rather than type checking it with HTML button element. Exactly. Maybe what we should do is just check if it's a button, then we don't add the role. Otherwise, we add it. Um, there's, there are some enhancements we can do there. Currently, okay. we don't, but it's something that, uh, that has crossed my just mind. Just keep in mind, um, we only have 60 minutes left to create okay. whatever we're doing. Let's speed so. run this. Uh, okay. We can do press.update. Uh, sorry, where am I putting that? Yeah, exactly there. Okay. Press.update. Press then it's a function, so yeah, and prev or p, whatever you want, and then you are going to return not p. Uh, I'm going to return not p. Exactly, and then outside of the function, uh, inside trigger action, you're going to do node dot add event listener. Mm. Click on uh, with quotes. Sorry. And then it's going. You're going to pass handle click there. You can just pass it directly. Oh, okay. Awesome. And then after that, you're going to return an object. It's going to re uh, destroy. Is the name of the key. It's a function. And inside that function, so open the the what what do you call it? Are you the, looking? For like that, and no, it's like the, a callback the function? yeah, it destroys a callback function exactly. So you need to do after the parentheses, you need to do those not square brackets, but the other In, thing. Oh, inside curly. of the function, curly. yeah, curly braces. Curly yeah, braces. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> awesome. oh, a block. <laughs> this and is then, funny. I, I talked to someone else. English isn't their first language, and we were having all kinds of problems. I finally said curly brace. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Oh. Exactly, it's so weird. Like okay. parentheses is the same in Portuguese, literally the same. It's parentheses, so it's really similar. But I actually, rest. this probably has a more technical term. I just I'm terrible with it. Ah, kind of Isn't it a block? I mean, in what's inside I mean, the curly braces? These are brackets, point. right? And some people call these curly brackets. So I don't know. Well, anyways, some people anyway, call them do... curly boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Uh, so here you do node dot remove event listener. And you pass in the same parameters as the add event listener. So click and then handle, right? Yeah. And now uh, on create toggle, we can return both the trigger attributes and trigger action. We we are going to enhance this DX later, but this is enough for now. So, so we're just returning them down here? Yeah, you create an object and you return both the attributes and the action. I guess uh, it wants to put them in order. Awesome. Now we're going to create, uh, for some reason, pressed is not typed, even though it should be automatically typed. Hmm. Press. Uh, well, you can just type uh, it as a Boolean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, up here. on the variable on line four, do a Boolean. Exactly. Oh. The, except, oh. No, I think that's that's, uh, a, that's a writable boolean, right? Yeah, that's already that's already correct. It's on yeah. five on five where exactly there you can put it as a. Boolean. That's weird. Yeah. Okay, we can save. Weird. Format. It's already formatted. Okay, and then yep. we can create on lib a components folder and a toggle component. All right, lib components. Yeah. And a, and I know I can do that in one. <laughs> Toggle component? No, just toggle is fine too. Oh, just toggle. Okay. Toggle dot spell. That's spell, right? Awesome. Let's open that beautiful script tag. Are we doing lang ts? Yeah. And yeah. then <laughs> let's import create toggle. It's it needs to be inside curly braces. Ooh, nice. And now we're going to call create toggle. 
on script oh. tech, on the script tag. Okay. And you're going to assign it to an object. So const open curly yeah. braces. Oops. Exactly equals, and then just get those attributes and action out of there. Cool. Awesome. Now we can create a button. Okay. It's almost done. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> this is and good. Then, now you're going to spread the attributes there. So curly braces, dot, 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 trigger attributes. Cool. We and then you're going to do use, oh, it needs a dollar sign on the trigger attributes. I almost forgot. Because since it's a nice store, store. Right. That exactly. makes sense. Uh, let's ignore that, that for now. Okay. And then we're going to do use trigger action. Uh, sorry, here? No, no. Uh, yeah. uh, as an action. Use colon. Yeah, exactly. Oh, gotcha. So space, use, colon, trigger action. That makes so much more sense. Cool. And now inside, we can just do click me or something like that. <laughs> or how about we can toggle? Exactly. We can do that too. Now let's put that inside our page and let's play around. We're still going to do some changes, but let's just have something to get, uh, to get started. How much time we have left for, for coding? What's that? What, how many time do we have left for coding? We have, we have, yeah, one hour to get anything we want done. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so we're going to import our toggle, which is, yeah, yes, that's, it. that's the one. Awesome. Let's yeah, see our results. There we go. Cool. Yeah, a now, very fancy button that I'm sure yeah. everyone can see. <laughs> now, if you, if, you inspect, <laughs> if you inspect that button uh, on the inspector, what, what HTML attributes do we have? Oh, bump. nobody can see that. Yeah, let, me, let me bump that up too. OK. Nine. Uh -oh. now, cl now click that button. What? Uh, now we have data press. That's the magic of mouth. That turn uh, <laughs> <laughs> Now, what we're going to do is so can, we we, some... can we just pause for one second just to walk back through this? So we have this toggle. Basically, it's just a button. Uh, and then when we, we wrote this, we have some stores that came into play, right? And this use trigger action, if I can go in there, um, basically what that's that's pulling out is this HTML attribute essentially at the end of the day. And we're saying if it's if it's pressed, put something out there. If it's not, don't. But the 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 trigger action itself um, is what causes that click handler to be used. Did I say that terribly? No, it's uh, I mean I think it's awesome. Okay, you cool. got that right. Cool. Now we just need to add some styling so it's visually like different. What we could do is I don't know. Let's invert the colors whenever it's clicked. So okay. on, <laughs> so on the toggle component on Svelte, let's create a style uh, tag, and then we can just do button, and then uh, no, no, don't open the curly braces yet. Do like a uh, open square bracket. Bracket, yeah. Yeah, and then do data pressed. You don't need the the quotes if. Oh, you don't. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Awesome. Now you open the curly braces and do filter invert. Oh. Or you can do background, whatever you want. No, no, tell me about this. I don't know what this is. Filter. So filter. Uh that's it. Colon. Yeah, colon. And then invert. And then one. Awesome. It's gonna now invert the colors. It's a filtered function. Wow. I am yeah. so bad at CSS. <laughs> Now let's click it. Ta -da! That's so cool. Now let's do it with, I mean, we normally have some DX enhancements with Melt. So instead of having trigger attributes and action be two separate things. You know, um, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you. I was just, uh, we got a question. This will work even in Svelte 5, right? Are you guys going to rewrite Melt UI with the new Svelte 5 features? Exactly. Uh, these will work with Svelte 5. So. 
to answer this question, let's do by, this. By one. the way, this cat with a light in its mouth is hilarious. Yes. So, <laughs> that is incredible. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no worries. So let's go to, let's create a rooms version then. I, what I would say is oh. you copy that toggle.ts file and do okay. a toggle rooms or something like that. Or toggle.rooms. No, okay. it needs oh. to be toggle.svelte, right? .svelte.ts. Wait, are we talking about the- Oh yeah, it has to be .svelte.ts for .svelte. Exactly. Okay, so toggle.svelte.ts. Exactly. Yeah. This will work out of the bat, but- so uh, it's bigger again. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's when we set this up, we did choose Svelte 5 too. So we're already running Svelte 5 currently. Yep. Yeah. So let's do let's change press to use the state room. Uh so that's dollar state. Oh uh, right. I always forget. I only awesome. played with it like once really quickly. <laughs> and you then trigger... to, do you have to import the no? Oh, all right. It's magical. I didn't know that. Cool. Uh and now on tr we can just call it trigger. Because Svelte 5 finally has something I really am eager to show, which is just spreadable event listener. So let's get that. Uh, let's rename it to trigger. Okay. Is derived going to be an effect? No, it doesn't need to be none of it. It can just be a getter thing. Mm -hmm. So what we can do actually, just, let's go just... copy that data pressed thing, that copy line seven. No, okay. Okay, awesome. Now let's go to line twenty-two. Okay. Remove these two. Uh, these two. Oops. No, don't copy it yet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No worries. Now do get space trigger. Open your par uh, parentheses. Curly yeah, braces. Exactly. Oh. No, and now curly braces. Yeah. Now what's going to do? You're just going to copy that. Uh, you paste that line. I mean, and get accessory must return a value. Does it? Uh, are we doing? Uh, oh, it needs to be return object. Sorry. So you're going to return an object, and that's what's going to be inside. Of, yeah. Exactly. And now you're just going to return press without a dollar sign. Do I have to get that in there? No. Nope. It's, this is so weird. Works. And now uh, you're going to on twenty four put a comma new line. Okay. And then on click, it's all together, no cases, just all lowercase. So on click. Oh, that's right. We got that's rid of the so colon. Weird. Okay. <laughs> An arrow function. Oh, I haven't oh. played with this at all. <laughs> it needs uh, it needs two dots. You can also do on click parentheses oh, like, like that. For only one. Okay. Now uh, parentheses. Oh right, I'm just making. I'm sorry. You're making a uh, new JavaScript syntax. Yep. And now you just do pressed equals not pressed. That's right, because the state rune is reactive. I mean, that gives you that fine grain reactivity. So exactly. wait, where's, where's, what do you mean you by that? You mean like a bang, a bang. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, but you forget that. No, no, no. It's an equal. Equal to bang pressed. Exactly. It's so funny that you called bang. Yeah. Awesome. That's the what operator. Forgot? That's the name of the operator. Yeah. Can we press needs to be a let. Up, right? Yeah. Press needs to be a let. I forgot about that. Uh, so on, on four, line four. Oh, no, line four. Way up here. All right. And we can on. and we can delete trigger and trigger action now. Wow. So all this goes with. Oh, yeah. so much easier. Wow. Beautiful. Now you can. And we don't you can also. This. Yeah, I should have just showed Holy everyone that. Oh, so this is runes, huh? This is, this is the magic. Spreadable... <laughs> no, and spreadable event listeners. Otherwise, we would need that action. Wow, runes is awesome. Spreadable, but spreadable event listeners are just. Okay. And just now runes are cooler. Now on toggle spot, we can. Do we want to wanna... create toggle to create toggle? Rooms, maybe. I'm actually glad you're going to show this because extending event listeners currently in Spell when you're doing a design system, it, you have to write all of them out or you yeah. have to like do an interface with the events and extend it. And it's a pain. Yeah. Now we okay. can go to a beautiful component. Do we, do we want to create a separate component for this? Like copy the current? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, okay. So, so toggle rooms or something rooms. like that. 
Cool. Now we're going to get create toggle. We're going to switch it up. Let's do create toggle rooms. Uh, where am I? Create toggle rooms from toggle dot felt. Yeah. Oh, that got weird. Uh, yeah. Now let's change it up. It's going to be const toggle. Okay. Const. No. Yeah. Const toggle. That's right. Sorry. Const toggle oh. equals create toggle rooms. Uh, yeah. And then on button, we're going to remove what you currently have and we're just going to spread toggle.trigger. Ooh, that's wrong. Let's remove yeah, that. Yeah, the auto complete like mesh up Ooh. there. Sorry. Uh, toggle.trigger? Yeah. Toggle, it does, doesn't it? It does. Let's just accept fate. Let's try it. Oh, we forgot. You forgot the parentheses on create toggle rooms. Create a oh, function. I thought I had put it, and I must have removed it. Cool. That's it. Let's try it out. So, just before I try it out, just talking through this one more time. Yeah. So, create toggle rooms is a function that's returning this getter that returns a function of called trigger that is going to return our on click and our HTML attribute. Yep. Okay. That's it. See how bad I am at this stuff. <laughs> um, okay. We need to, we need to call it on page two. I almost forgot about that. So yeah. I'm you're going to add a import the other one. Runes. Cool. Let's try it out. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's working. Also, I wasn't wow. sure if it's work. It was uh, going to just, work. That is banana. And what we can do, even we can also return our state. So let's say we wanted the text to change. We could do that with CSS, but eh, let's do it with JavaScript. So going back to our toggle.ts file, we're going to modify both of them. It's going to be easy. Okay. We are going to return pressed, and that's it. Uh, down here. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. And we're going to do the same on rooms, so, but in rooms we need a getter. So okay. in toggle.felt, I, I, I mean, sorry. Toggle dot. Why can't I get there? You're there. That's the right That's one. Cool. And now after the get trigger, we can do get pressed. After the get trigger, get pressed. So on line oh, 10. Down here. Yeah. Okay. So comma. And now get pressed instead of trigger. And then you're just going to return pressed. You could do this with classes too. Uh, we just there do, are other things you can do, but. You know, are you so. able to do like, um, so instead of like this whole return piece, can you do like get pressed and then like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just like a function out of the end? Like, I don't know uh, the like getter setter. I'm yeah, not well. sure. I think you can like get pressed two dots and then do an arrow, maybe. I you don't think you it. can. There was something Rich had Ooh. a whole thread on using uh, arrow functions because this mm -hmm. isn't like automatically applied in an arrow function. So oh, that's what I was okay. wondering. Yeah. Okay, good to know. But that's fine. I mean, there are ways you, we can improve this. If I'm not mistaken, there have been a lot of improvements recently. It's just been quite a lot. I'm a bit lost. I haven't played with runes too much recently. I'm I trying to just it. following Rich and since then I'm like, wow, this is a lot. <laughs> yeah. Every day on the ambassadors channel, Brittany knows this. It's just like new changes, new changes. And what about this? And no, let's change this up. And now it's magical. State just works with everything. And then it's a lot. It's really fun. But I yeah. like how they called out um is it Keystone JS? Is that the old one that used signals way back in the day in, in the write up originally? Uh, no, it was. I was like, I feel Wallbacks, like. No, it was. Backbone? Some, it's something with a K, right? Backbone. Uh, and then. Inferno, oh, Knockout. Knockout. Dominic worked knockout. On. Thank you. That's what it was. Knockout. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> Knockout. That was Ryan Carniato's that. original thing, right? Knockout? Oh, he did Knockout too? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize. Sure. I know, he like he did salad. He worked with Marco on the eBay team. I didn't realize he had that as well. Yeah, me neither. That's awesome. Ryan Carnaro 
uh, he's been talking about that. inspiration. Yeah, that guy's wild. We need to yeah. have him back on again. You have everyone in here. What gives? <laughs> we try. I mean, uh, if anyone needs sponsorship, oh, I don't know. Where, where am I supposed to put sponsorship in? Maybe there? he just used oh. Knockout. He was talking about it in one of his streams. <coughs> so maybe he didn't create it. Huh. Well, he's too awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go to Toggle Svelte. Toggle Svelte, I'm here. Yeah, uh, the other one, the components. The other one, Toggle, this one. Yes, so what we're going to do is we're going to get pressed there. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're going to do, instead of the Toggle text we have right now. <coughs> sorry. The curly I'm braces. Sorry. And this? Pressed. Yes. So we're going to do an if statement. Oh. We can do that. That's even better. So if pressed, we we can say toggled. Uh, this is, yeah, okay. Otherwise, we're going to do toggle. <laughs> and then it needs to be a dollar sign to press. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Cool. And on runes, we're going to do the same thing. Does anyone know why this is griping, by the way? Oh, it's it's saying that the type is a noun, even though it isn't. Uh, I think maybe it's, I have no idea why. Okay, that's fine. I was just yeah. curious. So toggle runes, we're going to do the same thing. So wow, we already have it, right? So yeah. So is toggle this, dot pressed. Toggle dot. Is this and a dollar can, sign or no? Can you no, just can sign. you um, extract pressed nope. and trigger from toggle there? Unfortunately, not unfortunately. It's like it's funny. You can't because then we no longer have the get the gather function. It just oh. extracts the value as soon as you get it. But it's funny because with stars we have the opposite limitation. So what the limitation with runes is that you can't destructure that out in that way. You could do you could have some ways around it. Um, you could set the variables underneath. I mean, but it's just more lines. Yeah, or like have a encapsulated thing where instead of being press, it's like press dot value, and the value is the getter function. So press is an yeah. object. You could do that. Uh, this is one of the challenges I'm thinking whenever melt goes to runes, how I'm going to do that. But yeah, it works. But with stars, you have the opposite. You can't do toggle dot dollar press. That just doesn't work. And you say, hey. That's fine. Why would I need to do that? Let's say you're using two builders, two toggles inside the same component or something like that. Now you can't do um, toggle one and toggle two and dot press. No, you need to do pressed one, press two. Oh my God. Toggle at trigger attributes one, trigger attributes two. It's just a bit hellish. That's another reason why it's just so better to create components with the builders, like instead of just using them raw like that. So everything we just walked through. Oh, everything. My cats just dropped my Christmas tree. Oh, no. So, so that's sorry. fun. Every year I'm like afraid that's going to happen to him. Oh, yeah. no. So everything we just walked through, that was all just felt, whether it was runes on Svelte 5 or not. Um, Do you want to go pick it up? I mean, my girlfriend is going. I just message her. <laughs> She's like, oh crap. <laughs> yeah, if you need to do anything, feel free. <laughs> no, no worries. I, I'm I'm taking a look at my cat to see if she's going to do anything worse. And she anyway. the tree apart. Um yeah. sorry, so so we walked through 12.4 and 12.5 versions of creating basically just kind of uh, uh, do we call them builders just generic? Yeah. Okay, so builders. Um, but we haven't even touched melt yet, right? We haven't. And we so can we can try and create a brand new builder with melt. <laughs> so where does yeah where does melt kind of fit into what's happening next? Uh, so basically with melt, it's it takes this better that I just showed, but it takes it to the extreme. Um, okay. If you want, we can we can show a little bit like go to toggle on GitHub maybe on melt's GitHub so we can see a little bit of some source code and I can go over it. So it's on source. You zoom in a lot. Oh, there's no Gitaco extension. Gitaco? Oh, uh, they have their own now. So I don't use it anymore. What? Yeah, once you're once you're in there, they just have their own. <laughs> Doesn't okay. it still refresh when you click them? 
Uh, no, it's it's powered by React now. Yeah, they that's why it's so slow. Lines. But anyways, <laughs> so you can you can go to you can go to lib. I didn't say anything. Lib builders. So so I mean, seriously, if you go to a huge PR, it just gets so slow. They didn't optimize this at all. I know it's possible <laughs> to optimize it with React, but anyways. Yeah. Now you go to create. Okay. And now our toggle just got a, a whole lot bigger. Let's oh, see how many cool. how many lines of code that is. Not Seven too much. Four. It's not, it's too, not bad. too bad. So you see that I have a root element. It's the trigger element. We just name it root because it's the only one we have. We also have our pressed uh, state over there. It's just using. So melt has something. Let's go line by line. Sorry. That's okay. First, we have our imports. Let's ignore our imports. Uh, now, then we have our defaults. These are the defaults for the props that we have. Um, in this case, we are just choosing the defaults for default, pressed, and disabled. Uh, Melt builders normally have a default pressed prop. Like for every state, we have a default prop, but we also have you can also pass in your own writable. I'm going to show that in a bit. So with defaults, we just get the props. Uh, we override the defaults if a prop has been passed. Then for each of those props, we convert them to writables, to stars. Why? Well, we return these options. And then after the creation of the builder, you can still override these options, these props, if you want uh, programmatically, because sometimes you need to do that. Cool. Then on line 27, 28, that's a much more complex version of pressed. Instead of it just being a writable, uh, we have this thing that's called an overwritable. That's a custom star we created in Melt. Uh, what does it do? Basically, remember I said we have the default press prop? We have two others. We can have a pressed prop. You can see that I even have it there with defaults.pressed. And we also have an on pressed change prop. Um, this is getting confusing, I can see. But basically, let's say that instead of um, you just choosing a default value or just, re um, how can I say this, just receiving the store after creation, let's say you wanted to use an external store for whatever reason, you can, you just, you can pass that in. So that's what we are doing on line 27. In case there we are passing in a star, we use that. Otherwise, we create a brand new one. And what overridable does is it gets that star, but it also accepts an on change function. Whenever pressed is changed, uh, we, uh, we call in a callback. And that callback can change whatever the, uh, the new state uh, was going to be. So let's say a click toggle pressed was going to be true, but inside my on press change function, I return another value. That's going to be the actual value of press. This is useful whenever you want to override certain behaviors within Melt. Sorry, so so here you could say instead of on off, it's something else. Is that what you're saying? Um, no. Not exactly. It's just I'm overriding just the value of press. So let's say I wanted to oh. click toggle, but let's say I already clicked five times. I have yeah. an yeah. internal column in my component. I say after five times, it's not toggling anymore. Like stop. You're like too yeah. much. Exactly. So that's what I could do on my on change function. Then uh, handle toggle is just a function. It's pretty self-explanatory. I would say it's just checking if it's disabled or not before updating. And we have the main part of Melt, the builder helper. It's just uh, a wrapper, a, a function that accepts a name and some stars. The derived function return, it's just a wrapper. So we know what to use and an action. The cool thing is here we don't have root attributes and root action. You just have the root star and you can even do use root directly. The builder function kind of just wraps it all up for us. Hmm. Then we just return everything. We return the elements, we return our pressed state and we return the options if you go a little bit down. But I, I skipped I, I skipped the important part in actions. In the action on line 48 forward, you can see some important stuff. 
first, instead of just doing event listener and then having to do remove and stuff like that, we have our own event listener editor that already returns a, a callback that automatically deletes that event listeners. But also, add melt event listener does something else. It whenever you click it, it also um, emits a custom event, which is M for melt dash click. If right. you prevent default that event, nothing happens. Like the handle toggle just won't run. We normally expose those custom events for any event that we listen to. This is all. We all have an example of this in the docs if you want to see. Yeah, because I'm mean. like a little little confused on that one. Where's that at? Let's go to mount the website. Okay. Get started. Or yeah, and now we can go to select. There's a lot of builders. And now let's go to example components, change options with keyboard. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So normally, uh, yeah, use your arrow keys now. See how that works? This is custom behavior because if you do that on the component above you, that won't happen. Right. How do we do this? Yeah, you can click, click, and now keyboard. It's just going to open it again. That's wild. So, so the way we had to do this is to override the, uh, the keyboard event listener, right? We need to cancel the original one and do something on top. So if you click view code, you can see exactly how we do that. Go down a little bit yeah, until you see a lot of code. It's pretty up. bigger. Yeah, see, that's a lot of code. So we have, <laughs> we have, oops, you can go up a little bit. Oh. It says yes. use M as, or on M, M key down is the start. Yeah, exactly. This is the custom event we do. When when we're doing prevent default there, we're canceling the default builder behavior. Uh, we can also cancel the original event, the original key down, because I don't want page scroll to happen. And then we just do our custom logic there. So this is a really uh, underrated uh, feature of Mount, in my opinion. It allows you to normally when even when using headless libraries, you don't completely own it. You still like if I don't want a certain behavior, I need to rely on the props that a library has given me. And if there's no props for what I want, then I'm stuck, which yeah. is not necessarily bad. Design constraints can be good, but uh, Melt allows you to to go a little bit above and beyond if you want. Uh, it, you don't need to, hey, I'm just going to implement everything myself. Screw Melt. I'm uninstalling. <laughs> you can you can do this. How do yeah. either of those ways affect accessibility? Like, is one more accessible than the other? Because one seems to be the default behavior. I mean, yeah, you need to be concerned. It depends on what you're doing. It, it's not necessarily, this isn't necessarily unaccessible, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, you would need to check if mm -hmm. the behavior you're overriding uh, ruins accessible, accessibility or not. It's definitely a consideration to have whenever doing this. Like, Melt does help you create accessible stuff, but it doesn't prevent you. Uh, to uh, me, it seems like the way that this one is functioning with being able to hit the down arrow and go down the list inside of the select box is more accessible. But I just don't know. And it feels like accessibility too sometimes is just like up to the person like implementing it. Like we don't have, there. there is WCAG and like things that you can go by, but there's also like lots of different opinions about their, For sure. their about which is more accessible and which isn't. Yeah, some, it's it's nuanced. There's no right yeah. thing sometimes. Like they are, at the end of the day, the accessibility guidelines we have, there are standards that have been kind of agreed upon. But then again, as you said, there are some stuff that just hasn't been agreed upon yet. There hasn't been some discussion or the discussion hasn't reached like a formal point yet. Or sometimes there's also optional behavior. Like even with accordance, for example, we have event listeners for home and end to go to the top according to the bottom one, but that's optional, mm. right? So let's say you want to disable that with Mel. Accordion is a great one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because accordion. detail summary is not an accordion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true actually. They <laughs> are having like a, a prop that allows you to like only click one and only be one be open, I think. That's something that's going to appear. This is already has it. The standard you mean? Yeah. 
Mm. But yeah, the tail summary is kind of more like the collapsible component we have there, which is yeah. a accordion that's alone. Cool. Uh, so if just another time check. We have 34 minutes left. Cool. Should we actually use melt to create something? We can do that. Okay. We can do it. Where do we get started with melt? So we should probably get clone melt. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah. I thought you were going to say, like, let's create a new builder on melt. But, mm. uh, I mean, we actually, can. I mean, that, but that would be, maybe that would be too much. You can, can use the same repo you've already got started. Uh, that is true. That is true. Let's do that. Okay. Um, let's do that. I'm just kind of thinking of a person like, hey, this melt thing sounds cool. I want to get started using it in my project. How? Yeah. Let me just check one thing. Does the toggle go to toggle and melt? Okay. I want to see if we have a CSS example for that. Most of them only have Tailwind. We can install Tailwind. So That's go really to the easy top. Too. We can do a spell to add. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go to, uh, yeah, let's do that then. I like Tailwind. I think you do too. Yeah, we love I, Tailwind. <laughs> awesome. Let's do spell to add Tailwind then. It's NPX or PN. PM DLX, I have no idea. PMPX, spelt Ooh. dash add, spelt dash, dash add? Uh, no. everything together. Go back. There, there. Oh, no. Spelt dash add, no spaces. Together. 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 And then space, tailwind, CSS, at latest. Isn't the spelt add the latest? No? Oh, awesome. Okay. I always throw it on there as like a. I never know what it's going to grab. Yeah, I also thought it was, but I thought it was felt at at latest than tailwind. Should have probably done this. Cool. Just to see what the heck changed. But... Cool. Now, right. I don't know. <laughs> let's check don't if everything's install working. Install melt because we didn't install melt yet. Yeah. Let's just see if tailwind is working. Yeah, I don't even see a tailwind in here, so I don't think this works. Yeah, maybe remove the latest. I always go back to my like I'm coding cat if you just do tailwind in one command. Ooh. That's Should it. Work? It's missing the just latest remove, from Svelte. Just add. remove the latest. I swear I always put latest in there, but I do, but I think it's on Sveltad. I don't think it's on Tailwind. There you go. Weird tool. I think okay. it's BNPX, Sveltad, at latest, and then Tailwind. Cool. Let's All see. Right. I think we're close. Cool. Uh, what do we want to throw in a, a test just to make sure? Yeah, let's let's do that. Oops. I think we're running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Maybe uh, reset the server. I mean, try to restart it. Then. Yeah, that could be. Yep. Uh -huh. And our toggle looks nothing like a button because of Tailwind's <laughs> obnoxious <laughs> reset. Oh, yeah. oh, that is kind of a really bad. Uh, that's exaggerated. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that on a button before because I always end up using Skeleton right away. I, say, I have been using Uno CSS a lot, and it lets you customize the reset. I oh, nice. love it. But anyways, we can also go ahead and install Melt, I guess. OK. Uh, Let's go to the Melt website. Okay. Go to the yeah. You can copy that command. Uh, Uno is also by Antfu, right? It is. It is. Yeah, Uno is amazing. I want to. I wanted to convert the docs to use it, but uh, too much of a hassle. And it's going to ruin our tailwind examples. I'm kind of so. If we have time. There's something I want to talk about with Melt. We can get to that later. Cool. Uh, anything I should check to see if it's working? Yeah, we can change our toggle component uh, to actually use Melt. OK. So mm -hmm. let's go to toggle. That's felt. Yep. Oh, now, no. OK. Yeah, and let's do create toggle but from Melt instead. So let's change that import to be at Melt. That's felt. Yeah, this felt one. Yep. And now let's remove all of these. Oops. Now const. 
open an empty object equals create toggle. No, no, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sign. Ah, sorry. Look. Cool. And now inside the object, we can do elements, trigger, I mean, sorry, colon. So elements, colon, is it colon? Yeah, exactly. Uh, curly braces, trigger. No, it's root actually, sorry. Yeah, I should name, change that name. <laughs> Benefits of not having released 1.0 yet. Cool, and now outside elements, but still inside that object, we're going to do states. So yeah. comma states, open object and pressed. So everything's going to be really similar. We're just going to remove that trigger attributes and action, remove everything like. Just yeah, the yeah. whole shebang. And the action, and the action too, yeah. The whole thing, okay. Now we're going to do use, uh, colon, yeah, melt. And now it's going to be an import, so you can do enter. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And then equals, open, yep. And then you're going to do dollar sign root. Beautiful. That's it. Let's try it out. Wow. Oh, okay. Actually, that's not it. The data press needs to be changed. It should be data state mm -hmm. on the style. So state equals. Uh, here? Yeah. Okay. Comma. Uh, no, not comma. Uh, quotes, quotes, quotes. Oh, okay. <laughs> On. Cool. I think that's it now. Let's try. Uh, oh, because you named it on and off. So it's a data state attribute on yeah, and off, ex right? Exactly. Exactly. So there are some API inconsistencies in Melt due to the sheer volume of filters we have, and it's still not being uh, 1.0 yet. So sometimes we have these, like Toggle was one of the earlier components. So yeah, maybe I should change the data press too. They're so annoying. Cool. I think that's kind of it for that. Now what we can do, we could either, we could style it, we could try some more advanced filters as well. It's all up to us, to be honest. What we can do even, we can just copy. Do an add apply and do lang post CSS. <laughs> Get your tailwind in there. At, no, yeah, or just put it on the class. I do yeah. that. Uh, I don't know right out here, but. You can, you can also copy Melt's example, which is pretty. Oh, yes. That would be nice. So call. Somebody on copy. Twitter has been like complaining so much about the. The copy pasta of Tailwind. Yeah. Copy pasta. Oh, yeah. I've, wait, I have saw that. I saw that, actually. Yeah. Oof. Oof, oof that does not look good. Uh, width. Why is it like that? Let's just take the width. So. Oh, yeah, the yeah. width. But still, it's uh, still Give it sucks. some padding. That's going to oh, be ginormous. Big button. It's, it's a scale of four. Also, change Magnum to like orange, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have some custom colors, so it has to be Tailwind colors. Fun fact Magnum, uh, Melt's UI logo is based on my favorite mm -hmm. uh, popsicle, which is called Magnum. That's oh, okay. I was wondering why it was a popsicle. Yeah, I mean, it's a popsicle because of the name, but yeah. Whoa. The inversion of orange, orange is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Now we have. It looks better the people. inverted way. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> it is good looking. Cool. Uh, so, wow, we just dropped in Melt and you're good to go. Yeah. So, basically, one thing that is curious about it is you see the, that use Melt action. That is not a normal action. That's something that gets converted. So, go to the docs real quick. I'm going to show you something. So go to toggle. Yeah. This. Now, do you see on the sidebar on the bottom there's a preprocessor switch? Yes. Click yeah, on it. You have a helper. Tada. So basically, this is what uh, melt syntax normally looks like. But to avoid having to write all of this, which can get a little bit annoying when you get with more complex builders, uh, we ship a preprocessor that gets that use melt syntax and converts it to what you're seeing right there. 
So mm. that's what that use melt is. We could just, some people ask me, why not use just an action from the get go and apply the attributes within the action? And the reason is SSR, that's it. It's just so, so you're saying this part, just remove that? Yeah, let, no, like, let's say, why, why, why don't we just do use root and, oh. and make the action pass in the attributes? Gotcha. The reason is because of SSR. Actions don't only work with JavaScript. They only work when the browser is actually added, and it makes sense. Um, so, yeah, there are some libraries that have a similar. Yeah, one thing that I always want to shout out, like Melt is inspired by other similar approaches. Uh, to name a few, like Zag.js, there's the Headless UI by there, there, the Headless UI Svelte board by Captain Codeman. There's Grail UI. So they ha have similar approaches, but they all are a bit different. Uh, mm -hmm. Atlas UI, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uses only actions, I think. I'm not sure. So they're not able to be SSR. Yeah, Grail UI does do, they have one single action at the root, but they also have attributes sprinkled in. So it's the most similar. And Zag, Zag is pretty similar, though, but they don't have, they don't have a Svelte version. Maybe I had one more question about the code too, Alex, if you could put that back up. Of course. The data attribute on the style, is that documented somewhere how to use that to style these? Um, I don't think it's well documented. What I think Belt's biggest weakens, weak, uh, sorry, weaknesses is the documentation. We do, we do document, it is super hard. We do <laughs> document that we have the data state. So if you go down a bit on API reference. Oh, I see, okay really down yeah more down roots there it is you see data state right and this what are you using under the hood for this for this <laughs> manual typing <laughs> oh you're doing manual typing there's a a thing yeah we want to change it to be automatic so is it spelled no 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 because spelled if i'm not mistaken is only for spelled components and since we don't use spelled components it's gotcha. worthless for yeah. us what we, what Hunter was investigating using type doc, there are some things that work uh, with like type uh, TS doc and then just automatically generate an API reference because they create a JSON and just yeah. use that. I, I really want that. Astro docs do something. Oh, yeah, that. I saw a type doc in there. Starlight does that? Star, I think, I think Starlight does, but That's I cool. could be wrong. So basically, one thing I wanted to, to share about with Mount is, with runes comes an important decision making. Uh, I haven't br brought this out in the public, but you are now. I am now. So basically, there are two approaches. I have discussed this with Hunter too. There are two approaches. So one is the straightforward one, but really hard one is just let's convert the whole code base to runes. It's not hard because runes is hard. Uh, the opposite runes would make the code base quite simpler, I would say. Uh, it's hard because it's rewriting the entire melt code base. And the other approach would be to, to have an adapter logic. So we kind of keep the current logic and then we create an adapter for runes. That could be cool. Um, it's something I'm experimenting with. I also heard comments like, hey, why don't you change Svelte stars to use nano stars? Nanostars is a library which has a really similar syntax to Svelte stars, but it's framework agnostic. If I change Mount stars to Nanostars and stop using uh, any other Svelte requirements, which is just on Mount, I think. Could be completely yeah. agnostic. I have done some experiments. Uh, it works quite well. If you're curious, I can share my screen real quick. Yes, but first I need to know where is Hunter? Hunter is yeah, he is helping quite a lot, not only with Melt. Hunter is kind of a madman. He does so many awesome projects with mm -hmm. Spout and just does it all at once. And besides like work, he also is a working a working man. But he has recently done the Melt date picker and calendar and stuff like that, which was insane. I know he's quite busy too with making the bits docs uh, just be better in general, like redesigning, uh, writing some more stuff. And there's also all the maintenance going on on Shed Sense Belt. So yeah, he does a lot of stuff. I only do Melt and I, 
and work and other stuff. And I already feel like oh, this is a lot. And Hunter just goes and does it all. So yeah, he's a busy, busy person. Okay. Now you can share whatever you'd like. We'll, cool. we'll happily put it on the screen. Awesome. Let me. This is not a screen prepared to be on a podcast. Let me close stuff. I should. There's a Mac app that I remember, like present mode, that just closes anything that's not relevant. Um, yeah. I forgot which one it is, but anyways, I don't need that. I'm a. Should add a Raycast extension for it. Yeah. That's true. I love Raycast. I'm. I'm gonna. <laughs> That's where Pedro is working now, and that's what we talked to Pedro this morning about is Raycast and building extensions. So that's what you can build is a Mac present mode extension Yeah, that'd be if cool. it doesn't exist already. Oh, can you all see my screen? Oh, just one. You can screen. see Alex's screen. There we go. Okay. Wait, can, can you now see my screen? Yep. Yes. Awesome. So let me close. So you may have to uh, enlarge and zoom quite a bit, though. Yeah, no worries. So first, let me open what we're playing around with. So I've been playing around with the uh, the notion of agnostic melt. This is something I call agnostic tree. I've got one one of the builders that we have that's not super complex, but it's a bit. And I tried to make it work with different frameworks. Even with vanilla JS, this is using uh, not melt, but it's using something that I created using the same logic of melt, and it just works. This is felt with stars. I'm going to show the code later. This is felt with rooms. It just works. This is solid, and I'll prove it to you. This is not just felt with uh, this solid. This like a mitosis from Builder.io. Oh, yeah, but mitosis is what it does, right? It gets the components and then compiles it. This mm -hmm. I created, what I did is everything is created with an agnostic car. So I have the builder here. This is the tree builder. It's really similar to what we've seen in Melt. Let me zoom in. Can you see? I think it's good. good. Yeah, that's cool. Really good. So we have stuff that's similar, like atoms are the equivalent to writables and stuff like that. Computed objects is the... Uh, it's derived. Right. And then we have make element, which is the same. We have possible dependencies. I'm sorry, this, this is all nano? This is all, like, not all nano. Like, atom is nano stores. Okay. This is something yeah. I created. Make element is also something I created. Gotcha. I created a lot of helpers. I'm a helper guy. So each one can have, each element can have dependencies, attributes, and event listeners. And with this, after I created all this, I just do the same as in melt. I whoop, export it, elements, states, and helpers, and I use it. So if we go to tree.svelte, you see that it's pretty similar to what we have, what we had in, in melt. The difference is I don't do create tree and call it a day. I have to wrap it with an adapter. So I created a Svelte adapter for it. Each framework has its own adapter, but I only have to create an adapter once. I don't have to create it for every builder, which means I'm not like redoing a lot of logic. It's just one adapter. This is really similar to ZachJS's approach, but the difference is ZachJS doesn't work with Svelte. It doesn't work with vanilla JS. Yeah. It, it only works with React, Vue, and Solid. This way, it could work with potentially everything. Um, if it works with vanilla, it should work with everything, I assume. But we know that's not the case sometimes, but I will experiment. And then I just use it like I would normally, like tree, it's a, it's a star and an action. The way I use it, tree, and then I can do use tree.action, I guess. So yeah, that's it. And so you don't have your helper here, your preprocessor built into yeah. that. Yeah. I don't, but I could, I could have it. Uh, and I even have runes working too with the same code base. So tree.helpers, tree.elements. This is a sub component that also has everything in there. I have the React version working, which is just, oops, da, 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 da. I don't like looking at React. Cool. Use components. <laughs> Having to use hooks, React was the most painful to to create. Even though, I've... of course, it was. Can you? Yeah, can but you tell I... he's a Svelte fan, folks. Yeah, but the thing is, 
I'm more of a React hater than a Svelte fan. <laughs> I'm joking. React is not bad, everyone. I just like to kid. I've, I've, I think I've coded more in React in my life than in Svelte, unfortunately. Yeah, same. But anyways, there's also Solid, which is also called Views. I'm sorry. I didn't do Vue because I was too lazy. Um, <laughs> I think the most interesting to show, though, is Vanilla. Vanilla JS is super different because you can't just do things declaratively. What I did is I created, I did kind of like a HTML attribute thingy. So what I do is I do data V from vanilla tree. And then so when that looks I, like you. Damn, I need to do, you know what I should do? I should do this. Vanilla. Oh. Ice cream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so vanilla. It could be like this, but yeah, it does look like view them. <laughs> but when I do these HTML attributes and I call in my builders with the vanilla JS adapter, it just scans the DOM, the not the DOM, but the document, and done. And then it adds the attributes and stuff like that, it, and the event listeners to it given the HTML attributes. I do this inside here too. I can even yeah, add props to the, the icon. So normally in Svelte, if you wanted to add that specific prop to an element, what you would do is call it in the star. It's actually a function in this case. No, yeah, it's a function. And pass in some arguments. And here, we kind of do the same, but we do it with HTML attributes. It does look a bit ugly on the DOM. Yeah, so the props actually get added on the DOM. Yeah, but it works. We could remove it too. Like after it's read, it can only be read once anyway. So we could just remove it. You got a little hash class in there or something. A hash class. I do it. There's like using... an ID in there at the end, kind of like Spelt does the... Yeah, oh, it's, it's because of Astro. Oh, okay. I'm using Astro to like just be able to run everything all at once. Gotcha. So yeah, with okay. if this would be it would be a hefty rewrite to Mel too, but it's a it's a different approach that I'm willing to try, especially because of agnostic stuff. But I still need to try like one. I don't want to compromise on Svelte's D, uh, DX uh, in order to achieve this. So one possible approach that me and Hunter discussed was like do the two approaches at the same time, which is kind of insane. So in one end, go and we write stuff in rooms, but at the same time, try the agnostic approach, see which one fares better. Or maybe what I thought is like, do the agnostic as a side project. If it works, yeah. eventually it becomes the main project. I don't know. It's something I'm willing to try. I have a question going back a little bit. We were talking about spreading event listeners. Did we yeah. show that? We did. We did with the rooms uh, version. Okay. But so it just I, automatically like spreads them. Exactly. It does. Like in the end, like if I show, I can show it even here. So here on my item element, I declare my listener. So there's key down. There's click. There's focus. And if I go to tree dot rooms, oh, uh, and on tree dot inner, I can even do like console.log tree uh, tree dot elements dot item I think that's it yeah just so I can see what's what's going on there when I do that it's an object and it has my yeah. HTML yeah. attribute how do I do a zoom in here oh here it is so those are the ones coming from melt so melt is giving you the event listeners and they're spreadable exactly and you're not having to Exactly. I spread them. Oh, this is Adventos. Oh, if you wanted different event listeners than Melt gives you access to, you would still have to do the same thing. You can just do on click like this. And then it just yeah. works. And if you wanted to, let's say I, I don't want to use, I don't want this on click. So I could do like on click. I maybe or no, or like an empty one. Uh, I'm kind of all over the place because I know that like there's so many things I could probably talk to you for an entire day and still not talk about everything. But do you know the Spelt component documentation? 
where you do a comment and then you do at component and you can just start writing uh markdown no oh what okay what do you mean so um it's a, it's documented like just very vaguely in the Svelte documentation. But if you do a comment inside of a Svelte component, so you're in a Svelte component now, go outside of your markup somewhere. Okay. Make a comment. I think you might have to be out. Oh, I don't know if you can do it inside the script tag. Do it like between the script and the start of your markup. This? Uh, like an HTML comment. There you go. At component. Uh huh. Oh, oh. And then now you can just write Markdown, and that will auto document your component for IntelliSense. And then when you what? hover over it when you're using it, um, you can see that anything that you write there. Huh. This so now amazing. go to your tree inner component wherever that's used and hover over it. What? <laughs> It's so amazing. I was wondering what I was getting at is that the spelt documentation, I wish that there was a way for me to write everything about a component for it to take that doc and then parse that into like actual like a documentation page somehow. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. I want, I mean, maybe you could, you could just, I think you would, you would need to analyze, uh, have a analyzer, a code analyzer, right? I guess like uh, a build stuff. Like is that AST, like something yeah, that will exactly. reverse it and look for the at component and then grab that yeah. and yeah. But in the, in the end it's of like, the day, that's, that's kind I of like how type time the works. Thing, but that, I would love it if that would happen, but this is what I'm using for my documentation of my components right okay, now. Okay, this is right, really cool. This is really cool, I didn't know about this. Okay, this is awesome. It's another thing like sometimes Svelte components have all these amazing features and I can't use them in Melt because no, it's not a component library. It's a builder library, right? Yeah. So, so you don't actually have the components, but like Hunter yeah. can use this. Yeah. But so I can complain because I can just do, uh, yeah, Hunter can. What I can do is just like. And you could use it in your documentation examples too, like I somehow. Could. Yeah. One thing I want to do with Melt is like, Melt is really advanced. It's a complex library. Uh, it's the qualms of it being flexible. And the thing is, sometimes a lot of people get lost in how do I create components with these? And it's not a good sign because it's the main thing you're going to be doing. Like, how do I make props reactive and et cetera? So I want to have some componentization examples. But the thing is, as I show, like, things are going to change a lot. If I go and do like this agnostic thing, the docs are going to be re rewritten in Astro, which would mean yeah. I'm going to rewrite a lot of ways of how I write docs. And then I can just do this API reference, this automatic stuff from scratch, which would be awesome. So that's the reason why I'm delaying a little bit the, the docs enhancement, because I'm not sure which way we're going to go yet. I'm more focused on like making all the API uh, stable, making tests pass, fixing bugs, so we can ship 1.0 and then go for whatever is going to be Melt's future. So what are you using for testing? Uh, we are using Vitest with testing library, and that's mostly it. We also have some accessibility testers. We have we, there's a X uh, extension for. Are you using Playwright? I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Sorry, oh. what's what's X? So the X extension works without Playwright. I thought that was for Playwright. No, there's an X Jest extension we, which you can use in Vitest. I think that's what we're using. Yeah. Oh. Then it's really simple. Like if I go to, let's go to the Melt code page. So. Yeah, I'm I'm using VTest and testing library, but I was going to add in Playwright for more. They have an experimental component testing, but it doesn't work very well. And so yeah, I've tried, I've tried that with Redix Vault, uh, because I had some issues with testing library. Um, but yeah, it had some, it's not documented re very well yet because it's still in, in beta. Yeah, yeah, I had some issues too. But just that's okay. works good. Vitas is working look at really this good. Library. Yeah, one thing I really wanted to try is Storybook uh, with the new visual testing capability. So Storybook would be awesome because I could show how component is done, uh, let people play around with drops, and if there's testing, like if I can integrate it with Vitas, I can. Well, that already covers testing, and it would also cover visual mm -hmm. testing because sometimes. I'm writing something out, I'm trying to debug a test, but I can't see anything. So I have to copy, test my code, put it on the Svelte environment and play around with it. 
I completely agree. I haven't gotten storybook testing working yet. And I know for visual testing, I think you need to have like a chromatic key. So you need to be like bought into chromatic for storybook. Oh, I mean, I, I know I received like, a, I, I've joined a wait list and I received an email like, hey, you've been invited and that's it. I don't, I haven't tried it out though yet. Oh, cool. If maybe that will go well. Um, I do have Storybook integrated, so I have visual stuff, but my testing is not inside of Storybook yet. I see, I see. But yeah, I want to, we do have Storybook. We just barely use it. Like if you see, there's some like stories. We have mm -hmm. some, but yeah, we haven't used it extensively. My idea initially was to have like a link in the docs that leads you to Starbucks so you can play around. So yeah, docs in general uh, and a little bit of testing. It's uh, it's like my biggest pain point with Melt. I wish I could just wave a wand and like, someone do it for me. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wish I had another person to do the testing and stuff for me because my hardest yeah. thing is like when you're building a component library, what do you test? I can test that it functions, it presses the button, it clicks, that happens, the links go to the links, but yeah, what else is there to test? Like, what am I testing? Let's see, this is the accord and this is Tuggle Group. <laughs> Tuggle Group, <laughs> my bad. Let's see what we're testing for Tuggle Group. Accessibility That's violations, no tabs, does, uh, keyboard navigation, selection, a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff, accessibility stuff too. Like I'm really lacking on, I need to step up my game with that, but time, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> One thing I do normally is like, whenever there's a new issue uh, that's, hey, something's not working in a component, I fix it. And the same PR, I try to create a test for it. So it doesn't happen again. That's a good yep. way I say to, to do That's this exactly test. what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> But the bad, I think this is this can only work if like your project is used by many people. If you're using like an internal project at work, sometimes like of course we catch bugs, but it's not as frequent. Um, yeah, there should be some preemptive testing for sure. That makes sense. Well, I hate to break up the the fun that y'all are having, but we've we've come upon it. No. I just, uh, first of all, I want to say thanks for showing us around Mel UI. That's really sweet. And then breaking down everything. So, you know, Brittany can nerd out for all day long. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. It's always a blast. I'm, I'm sorry we interrupted your uh, your day of sickness. It sounds like you're doing okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I thought I was going to have some coughing fit off talking too much, but I'm I'm okay. Just a runny you, nose that's invisible to the camera. Thank God. <laughs> I think you got so excited because of uh, being able to talk about this stuff. That's why. Exactly. Now you I, feel better. I love it. Yeah, it's my <laughs> medicine. Now, after this podcast, I'm just going to lie and die from <laughs> sickness. <laughs> well, as always, um, the GitHub repo is up from what we worked on, and the links are out. And um, you can check us every week at code with coding cat dev where we bring on someone and we code for approximately 90 minutes uh, <laughs> and we create something by the end of it which we did today we have two and cool buttons so thanks for your work yeah. thank you thank you doing some awesome stuff really appreciate it yeah, yeah thank you Lots i love i love uh melts uh contributors and people using it are, are really really thankful and uh it's something i'm really grateful for us all right thank you so much i usually have a post roll thank you oh okay we can we, we don't so we uh <laughs> let's do a wave maybe, maybe you know maybe we should uh come up with something like uh on the podcast i listen to they always come up with a something bye uh, yeah maybe, maybe we need to I, I always say later and i later, think nerd. Is that what syntax says is later i think they like creatively peace. they say peace <laughs> We need to do it like a meow. It's coding. I, that's what oh. I was just going to say. We got to stick with our cat theme somehow, though. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Call meow, you meow. later. I don't know. Meow. That was a terrible meow. What was that? I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> you can get a cat, hungry. too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Pause you later. Pause. <laughs>